Hey everyone, welcome back to another very exciting Photoshop tutorial using the Boris FX Optics plugin, which is quickly becoming one of my favorite tools for anything relating to adding effects or image processing within Photoshop itself. Now, as always, if you do want to skip all of my waffling, you can jump straight into the tutorial and you will find the timestamps and everything for that down below. Boris FX Optics is essentially a digital toolbox for photographers. It's a plugin that works within Photoshop in Lightroom or as a standalone package and comes with a humongous amount of industry quality effects that you can add to your photos. And with the Optics 2022 release, you now get particle effects integrated within Optics itself. Now, Optics essentially integrates Particle Illusion, which is Boris FX Particle Generator. And you can actually get a free version of Particle Illusion. And I've got tutorials and links and everything. I'm, again, drop you all of that down below. But in this tutorial, I want to show you how to use Particle Illusions in particular within Optics to really spice up your photos. But first off, I want to give a big shout out and thank you to Boris FX for sponsoring this video. Boris FX, in case you don't know, creates some really cool effects and plugins for filmmaking and visual effects. From the Academy Award winning Planar Tracker Mocha to the huge Sapphire and Continuum effects collections, Optics, Particle Illusion, as well as the powerful Paint and Rotor Tool Silhouette. These tools are used by professionals and hobbyists like myself all over the world. They work with most of the popular editing tools out there and there's tons of different licensing options to suit your budget. Go and check out all of the awesome stuff at borisfx.com and if you'd like to get in on the fun and support me in the process, the BorisFX team has given me some secret coupon codes that will give you 15% off and I'll drop those for you down in the video description. But now I feel like I've really waffled on forever, so let's finally jump into the tutorial. Here we are in Adobe Photoshop and let me just give you a couple of really quick examples of some of the cool stuff that you can do with Boris FX Optics and in particular with the newly integrated Particle Illusion Particle Effects within Optics 2022. So here's a little bit of a Halloween pumpkin, a bit out of season, but this is what I added using Boris FX Optics. So some sparkles, some smoke, glow in the eyes, and a bit of blood splatter on the mouth. Here's a simple photo of a celebration and using Boris FX Optics, I added sparkles and gleams and a lot of additional energy to make this look more like a magical effect. Then we have another image here of a dancer and what I did add with Particle Illusion is this particle effect with fluid simulations, a bit of glow and a lens flare just to kind of give it a bit more of a mysterious feel. And finally, by the way, this is the only image I actually took myself. Here's a photo when I was on holiday with Selena down in Tasmania. And using Boris FX Optics, I again turned this into something a lot more fantasy. Just added some fireworks into the sky with particle effects, stars and moon, a whole bunch of glow and turned this into a little bit more of a mysterious night scene. And in this tutorial, that is exactly what we're going to do. So let me just delete these filters for now. So here we are starting out with the base image. And as always, if you want to follow along, download links to this image will be in the video description. So you can just grab that to follow along. But again, just use whatever image you have. You'll probably have more fun anyway. So with the image selected, let's come into our filter menu. And under Boris FX, let's pop open Optics 2022. Now, there are a lot of really great improvements in the 2022 release of Boris FX Optics. Some of them are around, you know, filter and layer management. The UI has changed a little bit. But the biggest one, as I mentioned, is the integration of Particle Illusion. And we'll get to that in just a moment. So I'm just going to start out with my basic shot here. Now, on the first layer here, I'm simply going to add an auto adjust filter. I'm going to change the type over to be auto contrast just to just, you know, make that pop just a little bit more. Let's add another effect layer on top. And on this one, because I want to convert the scene to be more of a night scene in the color tab in the filters, I'm just going to come over to the right and just select this Kelvin effect here that allows you to change the temperature of the light of your image. Now you can either browse the presets on the left hand side here or change the parameters directly. I'm going to be a little bit lazy and just select a preset. Maybe I'll go with this Mercury Vapor White Deluxe here, which again just makes that whole image look like it's a little bit later in the evening and the sun has already set. Let me make that just a little bigger so you see a little bit more of that image. Let's add another layer and let's add some stars into the sky, just at least into the darker blue areas. So in the filters, I'm going to come into the Render tab I'm going to select this S night sky effect right here. So now we've got really nice stars all over the image. And by the way, you can change the constellations by adjusting the longitude, latitude or your time and day offset of this. But I'm actually pretty happy with the distribution of the stars in the sky. I just don't want them to be over the rest of the image. 
So with this S night sky selected, I'm simply going to add a mask. I'm just going to add a simple paint mask. By default, that, that will hide all of my stars. Let's just make the brush a little bit bigger. I'm just going to paint over the top here into the darker areas just to add some stars into the darker blue areas of the sky. Maybe I'll just raise a couple down here where the clouds are. You shouldn't really be seeing them through the clouds. That looks pretty cool. Let's add another layer and let's add a little moon silhouette in the top right hand side of the image right here. Again, you'll find that in the render tab of the filters. So let's add the S lunar effect. Now it's a little bit too prominent, it looks more like the Death Star than anything else. So let's move that over to the right hand side here. Let's change the size to maybe 100. Let's also adjust the lunar face a little bit. It's going to move this a little bit more up top right hand side. And I don't want it to be quite so dark. So I'm going to change the combine property from overlay to screen. Maybe I'll just move it up a tad more. And on the S lunar layer, let's just lower the opacity to maybe around the 70, 80%. Don't need it to be quite that visible. But now let's get to the fun part and add some firework particles into the sky. So let's add yet another layer. And in Boris FX Optics 2022, you will find a tab for particle illusion in the filters. And in here, this is the full version of particle illusion from Boris FX, which comes with thousands of different particle effects. So for example, let's select the PI complete filter here. And over on the left hand side, you now have literally thousands of different particle effects for all sorts of situations from energy balls to explosions, smoke, clouds, stars, motion graphics, all sorts of really, really cool effects. And the great thing about this integration with Particle Illusion is that on the right hand side in the parameters, for one, you can launch the actual full version of Particle Illusion and edit and modify any of these particle effects. You can change how the particles are being composited in your image. And there's quite a few different options for tinting it and changing the brightness and color. You can change the world transform, like the scale and how these particles are matched into the scene right from the optics interface. And under particle properties, a number of properties from within particle illusion are actually exposed here. So for example, I could adjust the number of particles in my particle effect without actually having to go into particle illusion itself. So they're dynamically adjustable from within optics, which is really amazing. Now you might think, well, great. So I get the static particle effect, what do I do with this? Now this isn't static. This is an actual particle effect that can be animated. Obviously for the final image, that will just be a single frame out of that. But at the top of the parameters for this particle illusion effect, you have this time parameter. And if you scrub this, you actually get the full animation of this particle effect. So you can place this particle effect where you want to, adjust the parameters in any way that you want to, and then pick the right frame to match exactly into your image. And this is a really nice workflow. And to show you that a little bit more in depth, let's start adding some fireworks into the sky. Now you could try to find the fireworks effects in these thousands of presets, but I'm just gonna come to the top and let's search for fireworks. And there's actually quite a lot of them still in here. And again, pick whichever one you want. Maybe I'll go with this fireworks burst new. Let's just place that right in the sky. And this is just going to be my main focus fireworks. I'll add a few smaller ones around, but this one's kind of going to be the main focal point of this image. Over in my effect parameters, I prefer changing this composite mode over to alpha and apply mode. It just gives you a little bit more control over how the particles are being blended into your image. Apply mode, I'm going to change over to screen. Now I can scrub through the time to try to find a frame of this burst that I like, but I'm kind of really happy with this one right here. But maybe I'll come down to the bottom and I'll just add a few more particles. So I'm just going to increase the number property to maybe 99. You can see how that just adds more particles into the same effect without changing the scale or the frame you're at. So that looks really nice and prominent. Now, in order to add more fireworks, we could simply add more layers and add a particle illusion effect to every single one of them, but it becomes a little bit slow and there's a much nicer way of doing this. And that is simply, we have a layer with the particle illusion effect already applied to. We can simply launch particle illusion and add tons and tons more particle effects in there. So we just have a single layer with all of our effects combined. So let's come into the effect parameters and hit launch particle illusion. Now, this is not going to be a tutorial on how to use Particle Illusion. I've got videos for that on my channel already. And again, links and everything you'll find down in the video description. I just wanna show you that you have all of the power of Particle Illusion at your disposal directly within Optics 2022 now. So if you scrub through this timeline, 
This is our single fireworks effect. Let's come to frame 18, which is the frame we've selected in optics to show over our image. And this is the single fireworks burst we have. You can see the layers and the particle effect right here. And you can go in and dig into all of these parameters in depth and change everything from turbulence to color to behavior to size and anything else. But we can also now add more particles into the scene without having to create another layer in optics and adding a different particle illusion effect. So let's say we want another smaller fireworks burst over on the left hand side. Maybe let's just check these ones out. And again, you could dig through all of these ones. Let's just again search for fireworks. This one looks pretty cool. So let's just with that effect selected, click to the scene to place this effect. But because we're on frame 18, this is where the effect starts. So let's just delete that again, come to frame zero. Let's click and place this effect right here. Let's come forward to frame 18 and that looks much nicer. I'm going to decrease the zoom to maybe around 15 or 20. I want that to be a little bit more subtle on the side right there. And also come to the properties and maybe just play with this frames to preload just to make it a little bit bigger. It's just getting a little bit too busy. So let's just decrease the number of particles to maybe around 150. And again, you don't need to follow along step by step. Just play with this and have some fun. Let's just copy and paste this effect and let's drag a copy over on the right hand side here. Now I don't want it to look exactly the same. So let's just tweak this random seed. So it just looks a bit different. I'm also just going to make it just a little bit smaller, a little bit less particles. Again, just don't want to add too much noise. And maybe I'll lower this frame to preload to zero. Let's make another copy of that. So we kind of have like three little golden bursts happening over here on the side. And again, let's adjust that random seed a little bit. Maybe I'll give this one a little bit more velocity so it spreads out just a little bit more. Finally, maybe I'll just add a little bit of glitter underneath here on the left hand side. And why not just pick this fireworks glitter continuous effect right there. Again, let's make sure we go to frame zero before we place this particle emitter. Let's drag this up a little bit, come back to frame 18 and just check out what that looks like. It's not bad, but there's very few particles. So again, let's just increase frames to preload to just pump a few more particles into that. That's not too bad, but they are all way too big. So let's decrease this size here to decrease the size of the individual particles to maybe around 50. Let's really jack up the number though, because I want lots and lots and lots of little sparkles here. Maybe the size down just a little bit more. And I'll also decrease the weight so they don't drop quite so far. Maybe again, about 30. And let's just change the tint color to maybe pink, just to give it a little bit of a color contrast right here. So now our particle effect is a whole lot more detailed. That looks pretty good. Let's simply hit apply. And this will take us back into optics and we now have our enhanced particle effect. Let me just reposition that just a little bit more over to the right hand side. And that actually looks pretty cool. Now, as I said, you can add tons and tons of different particle effects using particle illusion, but it's just the amount of possibilities is just endless. And I really like how easy this is to use. But now let's add a little bit of glow and grading and lighting to kind of bind all of this nicely together. So let's add yet another layer in the filters. I'm just going to come into search and I'm just going to search for glow because I want to pick the S glow effect. So let's apply that to this layer. And that looks more like an explosion than fireworks. So let's increase this threshold from 0.5 to maybe point, let's try 0.75. I might increase the glow width just a little bit to maybe around 200. Next, let's pop open the atmosphere settings in the glow effect parameters. Let's increase, let me just make this a little bit bigger so you can actually see what this says. Let's increase the atmosphere amplitude to, let's just try three. And you can now see a little bit more of a pattern in this glow. So it looks more like smoky clouds in front of the fireworks, which just looks a little bit more realistic. And finally, on this color, I might actually use the color picker and pick something a little bit more orange bluish here. It just brings a little bit more color back into this particle effect. So I think that actually looks pretty good. I might actually just edit the PI complete layer and just move the particles down just a tad. Yep, that looks good. Next, with fireworks going on in the sky, you probably have some lighting on the ground and you can paint that on individually, but let's just use another effect for that. So let's add another effect layer, come to the search in the filters, we'll still search for glow, which is great because I want to pick glow edges. So let's apply the glow edges effect to that. And that looks completely ridiculous. So let's adjust the glow width to maybe around 15. Let's bring the edges threshold, like what gets determined to be an edge and gets that lighting up to one. Brightness, probably also a bit too bright. So maybe glow brightness of 
And finally, I'm going to increase this edge smooth to probably around about four. And that looks like, yes, yeah, some lighting happening on the rocks down here, which is all I want. Obviously, I don't want it everywhere else. So again, let's add another mask and let's add a paint mask once again. I'm kind of just going to paint some of that glow down here onto the edges of the rocks where I think some of that fireworks glow might be falling. Let's just use the color picker again to pick something that's a little bit more blue tinted already. And let's lower the opacity 100 is way too bright, maybe to 50. So you get a little bit of that lighting from the fireworks kicking through. Let's add yet another layer to add some more larger bright areas. And for that in the filters, I'm simply going to search for the curves effect and apply that to my layer. Let's bump the brightness up a fair bit. But again, we don't want to affect the entire image. So once again, let's add another paint mask to this layer as well. I'm going to use a fairly broad brush. Just make sure it's very, very smooth as well. And maybe I'll lower the opacity as well to maybe around 30. So I'm not painting too much brightness. And then again, I'm just going to paint a few areas of the image a little bit brighter where I think some of the light of those fireworks would really hit the ground and some of the rocks. And again, feel free to go into as much detail as you think you need to add the realism that you like. I think that's good enough for now. Let's just add one more layer to our stack, come into the filters. And the last one I'm going to add is a vignette effect to just again, focus the viewer's eye a little bit more onto the center of the image. But this is way too strong. Let's maybe lower the opacity to maybe 0.2. And I think that looks pretty nice. Let's hit apply. And this is our final processed image. Now, ideally I'd clean up some of these blobbiness around some of the lighting effects and maybe just add a little bit more color and detail into some of the highlights I've painted on. But hopefully this gave you an idea of all of the awesome stuff that you can do with Boris FX Optics directly in Photoshop. And now that you have Particle Illusion integrated into Optics 2022, you now have access to a humongous amount of customizable particle effects that you can add to your photos to really add something different into your images and just make them stand out. And that is all there is to it. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and please don't forget to like and subscribe if you would like to see more. All and any useful links you will find in the video description. And as always, please leave any comments, questions or suggestions down below. And with that, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.